Hi guys, Tony here. Today I've got on Dr. Neil Paulvin. We're going to be talking all about spermidine. Make sure to give him a follow on Instagram. Also, I've got a bonus guest on today, Ryan Smith, who gives his opinion on spermidine too. So hi, Neil. Yeah, it's good to finally get you on the podcast. I've been following your work for quite a while now. Um, and another one you I know you're quite hot on is spermidine. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, I, mean, I love I love spermidine. Spermidine is a derivative of wheat germ or natto or mushrooms. Uh, again, we talk about mitophagy, autophagy is the recycling of the cell. Um, so that helps induce autophagy, similar to things like rapamycin and other products. Uh, spermidine also kind of has been, if you look people who are on, more in the anti-aging group, I guess, whatever you want to call it, uh, people who know the hallmarks of aging, spermidine actually has the most hallmarks of age, checks off more of the hallmarks of aging than any other product out there, including rapamycin, acrobos, or metformin. Um, it can be used everything from like it may improve hair growth to can do stem cell production to healing the gut lining. Um, the only side of only main issue is if you're allergic to gluten, you need to either get a gluten free version. And it's also the cost can get pretty for the higher doses, which are, we're seeing work better, can be somewhat expensive relative to some other things. So, but it, it's something definitely top five, top seven. Um, to, again, somebody could be taken from when they're 35 on. Okay, and then would you do it like every few months? I understand it's not something you do continuously, is it? It's one. I mean, I definitely recommend cycling it. Um, it depends what you're using it for. I have patients who use it if they're using it for hair growth or, um, what's going to call it? If they're using it for fertility, some patients will use it longer. But usually, it's like three months on, at least three months off, is what I'll have patients do. Um, it's kind of the core program that I have people on mm. yeah because no, i'm not sure is there much human trials i know there was there's been animal ones where it's, it's shown that obviously it gets into their blood but can i ryan was saying he hasn't seen much uh with it you know in humans like uh like the data he hasn't got that kind of data yet i mean it looks promising an animal he's, he's saying yeah the human data is not as good as some other things um that's true um and one or two of the human studies were not done the right way so or the so it didn't show the beneficial effects. So again, it's not as power. It doesn't have as much combination of data and and benefits on the gate like a urolysine or vitamin D or fish oil. But it, it it works enough data there that we I we I use it pretty commonly, and the patients feel the effect. Um, but yeah, the data is not as as proliferative yet. I know a fertility study just came out. They have a couple other studies that are coming down the pipeline. I think over the next year to 18 months, there'll be more human studies that are coming out from what I'm hearing from the main companies that make it. Uh, one here in the US, and one actually, I think in England um, is their main hub. So, or create one, they have office there at least. Um, yeah, it's coming. I mean, it's hard to get human, good human data. It's expensive sure. to do. Yeah, yeah. So, sometimes, but yeah, it's coming. General supplements. I mean, uh, spermidine. I know you were saying you were. I saw like an old <clears throat> podcast, I think it's from a few months ago, and spermidine data, and that's still kind of to come out yet. It was looking positive, but there is that is yeah. there any update on spermidine? You know, so no update as of yet. I think when we were talking, we were referencing some of the studies which showed that exogenous spermidine supplementation doesn't necessarily level uh, raise, you know, your plasma levels of spermidine, which is, um, you know, confusing, right? We would want something we supplement to also then change our levels. And if it doesn't, it might not be having benefit. Um, I can say that in our analyses of spermidine, we, we would probably find something a little bit similar, which is that people who are taking spermidine don't raise our methylation predictors of spermidine. That's not nearly as good as a direct you know, analysis of, of, of sperm, spermidine levels, uh, but I, it seems to be, um, I would say, not as beneficial as maybe we once originally thought, but I should also mention that in animal trials, they do show spermidine supplementation to be something that increases longevity. So I think there's some conflicting data um, and we're, we're looking into it a little bit more before we publish. Okay. Yeah, I did a couple of months of sperm, like one month on one, and then one month on again. Um, yeah, it's just 
it's hard to know with that one. A lot of people rave on about spermidine now, aren't they? And yeah, yeah. exactly. And and again, I think there's a lot of reason to be hopeful. Things that improve autophagy, certainly I'm a believer in, but whether or not it's spermidine, I'm, I'm not sure yet. Hi guys, to help out the channel, do you think about investing in your health and buying one of these tests I have available? And yes, I'm sure a lot of viewers do like to invest in supplements, but not so many into diagnostics. And it's a bit like a Formula One team buying modifications for their car and having no data to see how it's working. Check out these short videos again, overview of all the data that you'll be getting.